All right. Hey, I wanted to get your two cents. You talked about how the uh, women's division is uh, making a lot of stars for AEW. We saw a new debut last night, Camille, who we've seen be a big part of uh, the NWA for a long time. She made her long awaited AEW debut. We had heard a while back that she was signed, but we hadn't seen her. All right. But we saw her last night. Of course, she is a Middle Tennessee native, and that was a pretty fun little uh, debut. And when they're bringing her in, in a big time spot. I mean, to be mixing it up with Mercedes Monet and Britt Baker, that's a good spot, man. Tells you you got plan. They got plans for her. She's got a great look. I've been uh, uh, texting with her in the last month, a few times. She's reached out just for advice and things of that nature. And my advice to all the talents is pretty much all the same because they're just like common denominators. Don't be late. Uh, be prepared mentally and physically for your role that particular night and, uh, look at every opportunity. It's just that an opportunity to get exposure and she got good exposure uh, on Wednesday night, I thought, and, uh, she dresses up that roster because she's got such a good look. So athletic. Uh, so I think that's a nice addition, Conrad. I think that's a good hire. This is uh, going to be fun to see what they're doing with Camille. I'm a big fan of hers, and I've uh, been long awaiting her AEW debut. So I'm pumped that she's got this big opportunity. And we're going to take today to use this opportunity to talk about you coming back to the World Wrestling Federation in 1994. Wow. So we're going to tell the story of how you wound up back. And we've talked about in the past, way back in the archives, that not too terribly long after you've been with the company, you have this Bell's palsy attack really right. for the first time. Mm -hmm. And you wrote in your book that Vince McMahon decided to move on from you. You wrote Vince needs you to come in. It was Lisa Wolf head of human resources for WWF on the phone today. I asked right away. She replied. <laughs> I knew what that meant. Did you really? Oh, hell yeah. yeah. He has no patience. He has something on his mind. <clears throat> Pardon me that he feels compelled to get off of his mind and, uh, close that little chapter of that day and, and move on. So I knew that my, th there's a bullet with my name on it awaiting. So we haven't spent a lot of time talking about her. What was your experience like with Lisa Wolf? Uh, I think basically she was probably a decent person, which is a preface to saying she, she kind of get in, I thought she got in a little bit over her head, her working, uh, you know, nice Jewish girl from New York city, highly educated, smart, uh, was, uh, she was out of her, out of her area. She didn't have to know how to understand athletes and performers and things of that nature. And she was very willing to do whatever Vince wanted as far as call JR and bring him in, you know, so. It was, uh, it was challenging to work with her. I'll just be frank about it. She thought she knew more. It's one of those dangerous people, Conrad, you've been around them. I'm sure you probably run them every day to some degree. Uh, it's hard to communicate with someone that thinks they know all they need to know about the business that they're in. And that's what, how she struck me. She had enough knowledge to be dangerous. Uh, I think she had a good soul, a good heart, but she was, she was lost at sea and, uh, you know, she didn't stay long after there was a, she had her tenure. She, she, she aged out as, as it were, as a cliche. And, uh, so she was challenging at times to work with. She just didn't understand some of the, the logistics and how to treat an athlete or a performer who are all naturally paranoid by nature, by the nature of their job, they're paranoid. There's not, not anybody in anybody's locker room today that isn't paranoid to some degree are worried what happens if, and uh, most guys, uh, as they know, they realize the different stages of their career that they haven't done a good job of preparing for their after wrestling life. And I always push that, uh, and some guys have done, did well by it. I mean, investing their cash and, you know, I talked to a lot of the guys about their, about their money, uh, and they're all 
there it's a, it's such a difference conrad than when i first got the business and guys lived on a day to day payoff day to day so you don't know what you're going to make tomorrow but you're, if you're booked you're quasi happy because you're in the, you're, you're still in the hunt you're in the pecking order for cash and uh now it's different because most of the checks are all guaranteed et cetera, et cetera. so uh they they're planning more and a lot of that i think ha has happened over the years because when jan was alive she was very close to many of the wrestlers wives and they would end up talking about stuff like that and uh she helped me a lot in that regard that we've really never talked a lot about but she could get more information and more honesty out of the wise than she could the husbands who are irresponsible to be quite frank about it not all of them but a lot of them and so she was uh jam's big help in that regard great to have a, a coach's wife that takes a legitimate and uh, honest interest in your talents and because they recognized it they got it and uh they hadn't been talked to about wrestling sometimes forever ever and a lot of them are are, are, are worried that they're overstepping their bounds and all so look it's your family's money just save spend less than you make how about that how, how, how simple is that? Can you handle that part of it? Set yourself up on a little budget. Have some fun money, whatever. But there's a way to do that. And uh, we did it with a lot of guys. And a lot of guys saw the, it, they trusted me for what I was saying to them. They believed in my leadership uh, by and large. And so therefore, I, I had their attention right away. I was JR. I was head of talent relations. I was the guy that hired many of them. So we had a good relationship in that respect. And, uh, I think over the years, when I look back at guys now who own two homes or they, they've invested their money. Well, uh, they got a financial planner, uh, they're getting, they're getting guidance. I think it's a, it's a hell of a good deal. Maybe one of the best things I did while I was uh, in charge of talent relations. Now we hired a lot of good talent that some of them worked out really, really well. And we got lucky to be honest with you, but, uh, I, I love the fact that, uh, guys are planning their finances more and they're addressing all those things. Cause if you don't, you get lost at sea, you just get lost at sea.